Becoming a full-time trader seems like the promised land for many people learning to trade, but something I've noticed is that many traders believe the difficult part is getting yourself to that point and then things become straightforward. But the reality is a bit different. There are so many benefits of trading full-time, but there are also major challenges that you don't have to deal with until you get to that point. Being aware of these challenges will not only help you navigate this transition much better, but also give you a chance to prepare in a more realistic way while you're still working towards that goal. So with that in mind, I want to go through some major challenges that you'll face as a full-time trader. And these are based on my own experience and from helping loads of traders over the years. So here are the three things I believe that full-time traders should never do. You can't control what happens in the markets. It doesn't matter how great you are at trading, that's just an undeniable fact. Okay, I guess I better include a bit of a caveat here. That is, unless you control the asset, you have enough capital to drive price movements, or your name's Navinda Sorrell. I'm going to assume it's a no to all three of those. So it's always a good idea to segment things into two categories, things you can control and things you can't. The market itself falls into the latter category. We can control our trading system, our entry criteria, our position size, and a bunch of other things, but we can't control the markets. Therefore, it's inevitable that you'll have better performance in some months than you will in others. You can have the greatest trading system, but if the market isn't presenting the right opportunities, you're not gonna have any trades. Likewise, even if you're taking trades with a positive expectancy, as you should, you still don't know whether the outcome of each individual trade will be a profit or a loss. Even as a profitable trader, you could easily have a losing month after having a string of losses. This is just part and parcel of trading. But this can be a problem for traders who treat their monthly returns as if it's a monthly salary from a regular job. I mean, what do you think is going to happen if you're getting towards the end of the month and you haven't made enough money yet? What if you're at break even? Or even worse, what if you were in a loss? What do you think will happen to your decision making? You suddenly have a lot more pressure and you're much more likely to take bigger and maybe even inappropriate risks. You'll probably begin over trading, experiencing FOMO and risking higher percentages of your capital to try and reach that return that you need. And then once you're actually in a trade, you'll have heightened loss aversion and make decisions that deviate from your plan. So these are basically the same sorts of issues that you experience when you risk too much money on a single trade. And that's because if you're relying on your monthly return, there is more risk on each trade. Now, I get messages quite often from traders asking about this transition to full-time trading. And they'll tell me I have this much money to trade with. And if I hit the same returns that I've been getting recently, I'll have enough money to live off. But that's not quite the right way to think about it. Instead, you should have enough money set aside to cover your costs for a prolonged period of time regardless of what returns you make in your trading account. So this means dividing your capital into money for your trading account and money that's not put at risk that you use to cover your costs. Then you can take withdrawals from your trading account less often once you've built up a big enough return to cover the withdrawal amount without wiping out any growth that you've achieved in the trading account. You know, living paycheck to paycheck based on trading returns is a recipe for disaster. So to give you some context, I quit my job in banking in 2012 to go full-time with my trading. And this was a relatively easy decision to make because by that point, I'd already made well over 400,000 pounds in profits from the markets. So that meant I wasn't going to be relying on my trading account each month to cover my living costs. I had more than enough money for both. I could make withdrawals once or twice a year to fund my living costs account. I wouldn't have to rely on the monthly returns. But don't worry, you don't necessarily need to achieve that amount of capital. Instead, since things like prop trading are more accessible these days, you can use things like that to supplement your trading capital. For example, one of our members managed to get around £800,000 in capital through prop funding. So by taking this approach, it means you can just focus on saving up enough money to cover your living costs without relying on your trading returns before you make that move to trading full time. You know, I have to say this next one is a problem I struggled with for many years. Without realizing it, I had this subconscious belief that if I'm a trader, it means I'm only working when I'm in a trade. Therefore, if I had a trading session without taking any trades, it just felt like I'd done something wrong, like I'd been unproductive in some way. 
Now it wasn't such an issue when I was trading part-time because I could go for weeks without opening any trades simply because I was focused on other things. So I was used to having days go by without taking an opportunity. But this all changed once trading was my full-time job. If I didn't open a trade during a session, I'd actually feel guilty about it. I'd feel as if I was failing, like I'd just wasted an entire day. Now over time, this would lead me to start extending my trading session times or start following more markets, neither of which would lead to my best performance. But here's something you realize after years of experience, or hopefully you can start to understand it sooner. That if you're analyzing the markets and doing everything that you should be doing, but you don't find an opportunity, you have still been working. Your job as a trader doesn't only involve opening trades, that's only one part of the role. In fact, you'll also start to realize, as I did, that great trading is just as much about the times that you don't trade as the times that you do. Your performance is defined by your long-term results, not each individual session. So understanding, accepting, and expecting this before you make that shift to full-time trading will mean that you put less pressure on yourself that leads to you taking the wrong actions, things like over-trading or taking bad trade opportunities. If I could go back to 2012 and give myself one piece of advice, it would be this. If you want your trading career to be sustainable and to perform at your best, stick to a consistent routine. Not doing this caused me big, big problems that I eventually had to fix, including serious issues with my health, and that's no joke. Now, when you have a regular job, you're forced into a somewhat consistent routine because of the set hours that you have to work. Then as soon as you become your own boss as a full-time trader, there's no one stopping you from working whatever hours you wish. There's always a market open somewhere that you could be trading if you want to. Now, there are three common ways that this can become a problem. You could work too much, not work enough, or not work consistently. Now, my main problem has always been working too much. As I started to make great money from trading, I became a caricature of the expression, time is money. I literally lived my life by that. I didn't want to go out anywhere, and if I did, I was still following the markets. I didn't want to sleep. When I did sleep, I had the laptop open right beside the bed so I could check the markets when I woke up in the night. I barely even ate. I wanted to spend as much time in front of the charts as I could because missing an opportunity would mean potentially missing out on more money. Now, because of this unhealthy lifestyle that I was living, my health deteriorated rapidly and I had several serious symptoms, including a terrible infection. So I was rushed to an emergency clinic, the doctors did all sorts of tests, and at one point they were convinced I had diabetes. But it turns out I was just severely run down and suffering from chronic stress. And I talked about all of this and all of my experiences around that time in a video that you can click up here to watch. You know, trust me, it's so easy to fall onto this slippery slope of thinking more trading time equals more money. But in reality, your performance per hour will be so far from your peak, you'll be making more mistakes and nothing about it will be sustainable. In fact, studies have shown how bad sleep can be disastrous for our trading in ways that we're not consciously aware of. And again, there's a video up here you can watch to understand more about that. But then at the complete opposite end of the spectrum, you may actually find that you end up working much less, maybe not working enough. Since you're not being held accountable by work colleagues or your boss, your work sessions might gradually reduce and reduce as you realize that you could be doing other things. You're likely to be working from home, so it means you have to constantly battle with all the usual distractions while not having anyone there to tell you off for missing your day of work. It's only you being accountable to yourself. But you know, a far more common situation is for traders to spend a good amount of time in the markets, but following an irregular routine. It's kind of like the cycle that teenagers go through during school holidays. You start going to bed later, then because of that you start waking up later, and before you know it, you don't have set work times, you just get started whenever you wake up and finish when you feel like it. Now, there are many reasons why this is bad for your trading. Not only is an inconsistent sleep routine just as bad as not sleeping for long enough each night, but the actual skill aspect is going to suffer as well. Without following the markets at set times, you'll lack a lot of important implicit knowledge, and since a big part of trading is about being consistent, how can you achieve that if everything in your life is in flux? You will experience your best performance and be much more likely to have a sustainable long-term career as a trader if you stick with a set routine each day. As boring as it seems, if you achieve consistency in your everyday life, you'll be much more likely to experience consistency in the markets. Remember, being a full-time trader 
is a job. Yes, you have a lot more freedom, but you should still hold yourself accountable in the same way you would if you were reporting to someone else. So these are just some of the challenges that you'll face as a full-time trader. Once you make the transition, I'm sure you'll encounter many more problems that you'll have to solve, but don't let this dishearten you. Achieving success in any career involves experiencing challenges and learning to overcome them. That's how you continue to grow and how you gain wisdom. Now, in most cases, the best way to solve a problem is to think about it logically. Find the root cause of the problem and find ways to overcome or mitigate that. And if you want to know more of the most important insights that I think traders need to succeed, check out my free training that's linked in the description box below. Thanks for watching.